focused on encouraging the development of robotics and automation. The result is that more than 160 Canadian businesses, along with 60 universities and research groups, are already involved in developing space technology projects with over 150 contracts awarded. Many projects are the results of what we've learned from the 50 flawless flights of Canada Arm. Others have been directly stimulated by the space station. A key condition, however, is that the technologies must also deliver practical benefits back on Earth. In Vancouver, Kinetic Sciences Inc. is gearing up to manufacture the world's smallest fingerprint sensor, one that adds a high level of security and protection to everything from a credit card to cell phones and laptop computers. And Cifra Medical in St. Foix, Quebec, is working on space-based imaging technology which may replace traditional medical x-rays, allowing patients and medical professionals to be united from remote locations. But this may be the ultimate remote location. Popular Science magazine has likened it to building a ship from scratch in the middle of an empty ocean. The International Space Station is being built in stages on Earth and will take about 45 separate launches of the American shuttle and Russian proton booster rockets to move everything into place. Main engine start, six engines up and running. And lift off. The process, which is already underway, will take roughly four years to complete. The International Space Station is underway. The core modules and initial solar power arrays arrive first. Then the service, living and docking modules with more solar arrays. They'll be followed by the experimental laboratories of the United States, Japan, Russia, and the European Space Agency. At first, three, then up to seven astronauts and cosmonauts will be on board, carrying on various research projects and operating the station. At least three Canadian astronauts will help build the ISS, and under a rotating schedule, one Canadian astronaut will work on the station for a three-month period every three years. But a Canadian presence will be there from the earliest stage. Canada's principal contributions to the International Space Station include the mobile servicing system and a unique vision technology, and they are critical to the project's success. The mobile servicing system is being built for the space agency by Spar Aerospace in Brampton, Ontario, and its industrial partners across the country. The system is multi-purpose, incorporating a large new space arm, a detachable dual-armed robot with dexterous manipulators, plus a mobile base which enables it to travel along the station. This enormous arm... Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield. This huge 18 meter long ton and a half arm will launch with me on board the space shuttle and then this will be the arm along with this large mobile servicing structure that will move itself around the space station and even walk end over end like a huge inchworm walking itself around picking up pieces of the space station and installing it grabbing pieces from inside the space shuttle and plugging them in and slowly piece by piece over the next several years assembling this largest international scientific project in history so something as big as this arm has brought together a group of people that then apply those sets of skills to similar problems on the ground and the robotics that were developed for this arm as well as the arm and the shuttle have spun off into a tremendous international capability uh, sales internationally and international respect that Canadian robotics has brought. The entire mobile servicing system will be guided by our Canadian space vision technology. It has already been tested on shuttle missions and elements of the vision system were present when the very first module was launched in 1998. It's been built by NEPTEC in Ottawa. Our astronaut Steve McLean explains how it will act as the astronauts eyes outside the spacecraft. What the vision system